and someone commented, this girl, Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. Before I forget, I'd like to thank our wonderful crew who are back with us today to make this episode happen. Thanks to Josie and Hurd, our director, Carol Lewis, Vince Buys, our co-directors, and George Sotorellis. All of them are working together in our control room to make today happen. I really appreciate that. Now we have, today I'm going to go back to reintroduce you to by now a familiar face, Nelson Santos. Nelson, you are an MNN certified camera crew and I know I dragged you on the map, but yesterday I do believe that you came all by yourself. Yes. Yeah. How did you feel the last couple of days when you were stretching with us? Uh, amazing. Felt amazing, good? Amazing, yeah, it feels good. Feels good. Yeah. And did you feel that you would like um, maybe deeper stretches? Were you too comfortable in the position that you didn't get a challenge, or did you get enough of a challenge yesterday? I could use a, a bit more of a challenge, you know, okay. some deeper stretches, yeah. Right. What, yeah. What, I know you've attended uh, classes before. <laughs> what kind of uh, stretching are you familiar with? Are you, do you go deep into the stretches? Do you move fast? What kind of stretches are you comfortable uh, with? Moderate movement. Uh, Longer holding times, or is that, because in the studios we do hold it for a little longer than necessary. Mm -hmm. When I say necessary, a little longer than usual, because it is necessary for our viewers so they can see how we get in and out. Mm -hmm. But our holding times are much longer, so that means deeper inhales, deeper exhales. I like the longer holding time. You like the longer yes. holding time. Yeah. Well done. So yeah. he's ready for the torture. Sarah, <laughs> you need to hold, have him see. hold much longer. Yeah. That's good. That, what's happening is, when you start enjoying longer holding times, and that's good for our viewers too, when you hold your postures a little longer than you normally believe you would, what's happening is we detox that much more because you hold it longer and then your inhales get deeper because you know you're gonna hold it for a while and you need we need to have a ratio of one to two, a minimum ratio of one to two. So let's say inhale to the count of four, exhale to the count of eight. So we want deeper exhales, especially when we're doing forward folds like yesterday. When we did the forward folds, deeper exhales are more important. Two days ago, when I first <laughs> dragged you, drafted you into the mm -hmm. studio on the mats, we did more of back bends, in which case inhales are important. So in yoga, we, we try to go in a very structured way. So it's inhale up and back, for exhale forward and down. So that helps us get deeper into the stretches, helps us hold it a lot longer. Other than that, you know, I started off asking you yesterday, I don't think I really got the answer to that yet. Is there another dimension to you other than the camera work and oh, stretching art, with us? Art, art. Yes. that's right, I remember we were talking, what kind yes, of yes. Uh, drawing? Portraiture. 
Project. realistic. Do you do it commercially? Yeah. Do you do no. it for people? No. Well, I've done it for people a few times, but mainly friends. Okay. Mainly friends. So we have so an artist and a writer. Yeah. When you say friends, you do you paint as well, or it's drawing? I'm getting into painting now. What kind of painting yeah. would you like uh, to Airbrushing. Do? Airbrushing. Yeah. That takes a lot of control, yeah. right? Airbrush? That's a lot of patience. Yeah. Wow. I know, I've seen people do artwork with the spray cans. Is mm -hmm. that the kind of brushing It's similar, about it? it's similar. But yeah. you use a brush. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's like a tool, it's a gun, actually. It's an okay. air gun, and you just you put the paint in it, and you just, and it's somewhat like a spray can. And you can do portrait painting with airbrush? You can, yeah, you wow. can. Wow, I've got to watch you. You can you. add, you know, certain elements with right. the uh, airbrush. Oh, definitely, I can imagine there'll be a 3D effect mm -hmm. if you use the airbrush, yes. right? It's not yes. going to be flat. It brightens like, everything up. It's good. Amazing. It's good. And is it water washable? Is it water no. watercolor? No. So it's no. oil paint. Yeah. And you cannot really acrylic, paint actually. Them. Acrylic. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Acrylic dries fast, right? Mm -hmm. Very. All right. Very. Well, maybe you can bring some of your work sometime. Show it to our viewers. Yes. An artist and a writer, Sarah Torres. Sarah, welcome back to the show. <laughs> yeah, right. Sounds like we should get together and make a comic book. I've That's been trying to get an artist for my comic book. There you go. This artist out there is playing me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. You I have know a couple someone... of people that. Well, you're writing the script. I would collaborate. That. Well, no, I have a comic book that I created when I was a teenager. And I, I knew I had a friend who I'd always try to be like, come on, you can draw, you can draw. And you know, sometimes some people just have to have that confidence within right, right, right. before they can do anything with their work. And this kid used to draw, I mean, he had a portfolio like this, if we could stack everything together, just of like Martians and characters. He created, like he had these visions. And right. it's like, you know, I can describe it, but I can't do that. Like, I might draw Mickey really good. I might, you know, but that's a duplicate. That's not something that I just pick, be like, oh, okay, wow, this is this is gonna be great. Like, I don't have that talent. <laughs> well, you have an artist right <laughs> so here. So maybe we'll, we'll collaborate. If you want your artwork to tell a story, you have a writer right here, yeah. so great. Definitely. I'm so glad that Yoga Express is a little, has uses other than just stretching, so that's good. <laughs> right, <laughs> I know, we got a team. <laughs> that's right, viewers at home, if you're stretching with, uh, with us, remember, if you have any skills or talents you'd like to share with our viewers, maybe find people who can work with you on special projects, this is the place to be. Not only do you get a wonderful free workout, we've had, what, 365 episodes, not a single injury. So that must say something for the gentle way we stretch. Just a cramp. <laughs> we had a cramp so, on air. Right, right. <laughs> we had a cramp and that, on, but that's not that, an injury. It's not an injury, no, but that's important <laughs> to remember that if you do get cramps, it's important to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And cramps can, fortunately, if they're not very serious, you can actually overcome them with yes. deep breathing. So I don't know if you found any relief, but if you keep inhaling, it especially when you have a cramp, you take deep inhales, hopefully it'll iron out the cramp. But yes, if you've had, uh, the other thing too is if you've not eaten anything all day, you want to eat something. You don't want to okay. eat too much, especially if you're doing forward falls. But we do, when we are doing our yoga practice, we do want to make sure that there's something in our system, plus of course, right. drinking a lot of water. Yes, I that need to helps. get better with the water drinking because <laughs> And try warm water, that helps too. So make sure you have at least a little bit of food, dried fruits and nuts before your practice, gives you a lot of energy, low calories, and you've got all the energy to get in and out of your postures, of course, once you come out of the stretching. You're already hyped up. Your chakras roof. are right there, so you've got a lot of energy right there. I have purple hair. She's got this. Yes, we have these purple chakras, right? <laughs> I have to, uh, before I forget, I'd like to acknowledge Roberto Espinel for the studio lights and the sound system and our crew, in case I've forgotten. We have, we keep going? <laughs> okay, I thought we were almost done. Uh, we have, we'd also like to thank, if I haven't already, Josiane, Carol, Vince, and George. Sarah's requested for some seated stretches. So here's what we're gonna do. How are we doing for time, Carol? We have about 15, 20 minutes? Because we're telling our viewers that it's okay to keep your stretching to about 15 minutes a day, and that's what we're trying to build towards. So let's come on our hands and feet. Knees are directly below the hips. Hands are directly below the shoulders. Fingers are nicely splayed, so you get a good grip on the mat. Your toes are curled in. Cat posture or marjaria. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna inhale, dip our torso, lift our chin, chest, and buttocks all the way up. So we're making a nice little concave with the middle part of our back. 
Inhale and dip. Keep your toes curled in. Bend your elbows. Lift your chin and chest up. Very nice. Open up your chest, lift your chin. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. So when you arch your back, you're bringing your pelvis closer to your lower abdominal region. Curl your toes in. Let's try that one more time to redeem ourselves. Inhale, bend your elbows, lift your chin, chest and buttocks. Marjorie or cat, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's come into neutral position. And before we get into the next one, which is called camel, I'd like to explain something to our viewers. When you do, when we get in and out of Marjorie, the cat posture, it's a wonderful undulating motion of the spine. So you're going in and then you're arching your back. So what's happening is the spine is getting a nice compression of the spinal extensors in the back. And when you're arching your back, the spinal flexors in the front are getting a wonderful compression and the back is getting a beautiful release. So that's what's happening. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come up on our knees, take you through a posture called camel. Let's turn to face the front left of the mat. Knees are directly below the hips. Now remember, if you curl your toes in, there's more pressure on your knees. So I'm gonna keep my feet flat. The tops of my feet are gonna be flat on the floor. That means my heels are a little further away from my hands, but that's okay because I'm gonna try and touch my heels with my hands. Keep, if you keep your toes curled in, your hands are closer to your heels. You'll make the connection, but there's more pressure on the knees. So I don't wanna risk my knees. Hands on your buttocks. Push your elbows back. That already opens up your chest. Inhale, open up your chest, take your shoulders back, lift your chin up. Exhale, glide your palms down the back of your legs. Ustra or camel, reach for the right heel with your right hand, left heel with the left hand. Once you've made that connection, tilt your head back, tilt your pelvis forward and hold. Ustra is camel in Sanskrit. Hold it, keep breathing. When we say hold, it's always hold your posture, not your breath. Very gently, inhale, bring your hands back to your buttocks. And then inhale, very gently, let's sit down. Let's come into seated position into Nelson's favorite posture. The Supta Vajra, supine diamond. Vajra or Vaira is diamond, Supta is supine from the Latin, actually Latin, I don't know, whichever, Sanskrit or Latin, whatever came first, Supta is supine. Very gently, and you already look very comfortable, Nelson, so we're gonna take you a little deeper. Gently lower your right elbow and then your left to the ground. When you've made that connection, both elbows on the floor, tilt your head back. Resist the temptation to lift your knees up. Keep your knees down. If you lift your knees, you'll find there's more pressure on the ankles. You don't want to do that. Sarah, in case this posture, or for anyone who's stretching with us, if this posture feels a little intense, bring your knees out. Open up your knees and you can come back. If you want to challenge yourself, bring your knees a little closer. Engage your low back muscles, press with the palms, and let's come up very gently. And then we're going to do a little bit of a forward fold. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way up. Exhale, fold from the hip. I have no idea why I turned to one side. Keep exhaling and dip. Make sure that your elbows are off of the floor, shashank or rabbit. Inhale, press your palms together, engage your low back muscles and let's come up. Exhale and release from shashank. Very nice, I noticed that Sarah and Nelson brought their palms down the center. And this is wonderful that we have a chance to explain that. I tend to bring my arms out to the side. Just remember that when you bring your palms down the middle, you're actually helping build yourself up for the meditative state. When you bring your arms out to the side, you're still in the physical realm. So I'm still in the physical realm. Both be, my... <laughs> I'm trying to bring still it down, my thoughts. It, well, that's exactly what's happening. It actually helps you center your thoughts. Okay. It's focusing you and your, ali your alignment, everything comes together. I always seem to want to, uh, more of a physical workout, so my arms come out to the side, but it's good to be aware of bo what both the uh, methods, both the styles of bringing your arms down would do for us. So let's come, let's sit down. Tuck your left heel under the right butter. 
across here, and you do have jeans, so I have to give allowance to Nelson for that. This may be a little bit of a twist. Cross your right ankle. Yeah. Oh, very nice. We're gonna nice. have to make sure we keep some sweats in the locker if he keeps attacking <laughs> the mats like that. That's this. right. We're gonna keep drafting Nelson onto the mat, so you're gonna have to keep your shorts, or whatever that helps you stretch. Now, if you're wearing jeans at home, you've got if you've got jeans that stretch a little bit, great. If they don't, don't don't worry about it. You can still get deep into the stretch because the good thing about jeans, they don't tear easily, right? That's right. <laughs> now make any adjustments you hurt that you yourself put. <laughs> trying to force it. No, no, he's doing well. Stay right there. Okay. And if you fi find that your jeans are a little bit of because of your jeans, it may be a challenge. You can bring your right foot out to the front. You want to make sure that your right foot is flat on the floor. Push your right knee in with your hands and then talk your upper body to the right. You're already quarter way there. This posture, is, it translates to half, it's called no, half spinal twist in North America. Mm -hmm. But it also, literally, the name is called Ardha Matsendra Ardhas. Half Matsendra, Lord of the Fishes. Half Lord of the Fishes. Inhale the left arm up. So hold your right knee up with your right hand. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip your left elbow over your right knee, make any adjustments, push your right knee in, and then I'm gonna take my hand to hold on to my left knee, otherwise I come undone, I need to make that connection. If you wanna do what Sarah is doing, get yourself into a bind, connect both your hands, or you could do what Nelson's doing. Nelson, what you wanna do is see if you can bend your elbows, place your left hand on your left thigh, that's it. And then when you're ready, take your right hand behind you to get a little deeper into the twist. Ardha Matsendra, half spinal twist. Turn to look back. See, so whatever we do, and to quote a friend of mine, Judy Jacob, she said, it's okay to be average. It's not okay to be mediocre, meaning that we don't have to be the best among the three of us, but we have to be the best we can be at any given time. So we need to do the best we can. Inhale, release your left hand first. Untangle your legs and let's switch legs. Let's not forget the other side. Tuck your right heel under your left buttock. Cross your left foot over your right knee. And then if, if you need any, to make any adjustments that gets a little intense, a little bit of a challenge, maybe because you're wearing jeans, bring your left foot forward. I'm gonna see if I can go a little deeper. Push your left knee in. Talk your upper body to the left. You're already quarter way there this time. Place your left hand on your left knee. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, dip the right elbow over the left knee. I'm gonna hold on to my right knee. If you wish, you can hold on to part of your garment, your jeans, whatever you're wearing on the left thigh. Anything that'll help you make the connection. And then take your left hand, or you can bind your hands together the way Sarah's doing. Take your left hand behind you turn to look back. Especially in this twist, Adha Matsendra, or half spinal twist, it's a wonderful feeling when we come out of it because when we're twisting, we're actually locking our body up. The glands and organs in the upper and lower region are being deprived of oxygen and blood for just a few seconds, and then fresh blood rushes in when we unwind. Very gently release your hands. And let's turn to look forward. So untangle your legs. Let's extend the left leg out in front of you from Ardha Matsendra into Mariche. Mariche literally was the name of a sage, but it means ray of light. Now extend your right leg out. Fold your left, uh, fold your left foot in, but lift your right, uh, right foot in, but lift your right knee up. So you're about at an angle, at a 45 degree angle. Hold on to your right ankle. With your right hand, flex your left foot. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna exhale and fold forward. A little bit of a counter to the Ardha Matsendra. Inhale the right arm up, and then come forward. Exhale, wrap your right hand around your right knee. So that's it, go forward, exhale, fold from the hip, and then wrap your right hand around your right knee. And then hold it right there over your right thigh. Take your left hand from behind and try to clasp the opposite hands. If that doesn't happen today, that's okay. How are you doing with that? Because, okay, if you've got your hands together, that's wonderful. For those of you who are not able to clasp your hands, it's okay to use props. Use a belt, a face wash, a little towel, whatever you can find to help you make that connection. Look over your right shoulder. Don't forget to breathe. Open up your left shoulder. 
Very nice, Nelson. You've got your left foot flexed. That's something that we all need to remember. Very nice, sir. Inhale, release the hands first. And let's switch legs. Extend the right leg up in front of you. Fold the left leg in. Hold on to the left ankle with the right hand. And then bring your body forward in front of the left foot. Bring your left knee out to the side a little. Inhale, the left arm up. Exhale, wrap your left hand around your left knee. And then I'm gonna tuck my left hand into my upper left thigh. And then take the right hand from behind, clasp the opposite fingers, and look over your left shoulder, the other side, Sarah. Very nice. Then once you're looking over your left shoulder, automatically your right shoulder goes back. You want to try and sit upright, keep your right foot flexed, very nice. Inhale and release, release the hands first. Then keep your right leg extended. We took you through this particular posture yesterday in yesterday's postures, which we were doing a lot of forward folds, Janu Sesha, head to knee. Bring your left knee down to the ground, attach the sole of your left foot to the inside of your upper right thigh. Turn your upper body to face the extended leg. Right foot is flexed. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height. Palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead. Palms facing in. Very nice, slow, controlled motion. Exhale, fold from the hip. Janu Sesha, head to knee. Clasp your feet. If you're just at the point where you can just hold on to your toes, that's good. Make the most of what you have and pull your body forward. If your feet, if your hands go right over your feet, give yourself a little bit of a massage. Remember, 72,000 nerves that end in the soles of your feet lead to your glands and organs. So you're actually giving yourself a massage by just massaging the base of your feet. You're massaging your glands and organs inside. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release and let's switch legs. Extend the left leg out, fold the right leg in. I don't think we'll get into the prune and supine today either, but we're gonna try and get there. <laughs> I know you're waiting for that, aren't you? Extend your left leg out, inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. Exhale and fold. Very nice, Sarah, you remember to face your extended leg. Inhale, take your arms up, and let's extend the other leg. Very gently, come up, bring the other leg out, exhale, and fold from Janu Sesha into Paschimottha with a straight back. Hold on to your big toes or the soles of your feet and pull yourself forward. Keep exhaling. Inhale, let's come up, clasp your palms together. Exhale and release. We're going to take you through, I think we have, we're doing well for time. We'll be able to get a few more, a lot more in. Tuck your left, five minutes, wonderful. Tuck your left foot under your right buttock. Cross your right foot over the left knee. The soles of both your feet face the back of the room. Now, for some of you, both your knees may align one on top of the other. For me, it may not happen today. That's fine, what you're doing, just make sure that your soles are facing back. Right knee is up, inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip your left hand behind your neck this time, behind the base of your neck. Take your right hand from behind, very nice. Sarah's gonna show you how to get connect your hands behind you. Now hold, clasp your opposite fingers, very nice. Once you've made that connection, lift your chin up, open up your chest. Now you wanna keep your chin at eye level, so you want, that's it, beautiful. That helps you relax, it also opens up your triceps, and hopefully you're not feeling any tension in the back of your neck. The moment you fold over or you, you have to come forward a little bit to accommodate elbows going up, then there's a bit of tension in your neck. But right now we all look quite comfortable. Inhale and release. Let's switch legs. Untangle your feet, your legs. Tuck your right foot under your left buttock. Cross the left over the right knee. Go mukha or cow face. Go is cow, mukha is face. Soles of both your feet face the back of the room. Carol will pick you up on this side, so where you are is good. Oh yeah, when you bind, you can show them. Oh, That's fine, oh, oh. no, no, you're doing fine. They follow us, we have an amazing crew, they'll follow us. Now, left knee is over the right. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, dip your right hand behind the 
base of your neck. Take your left hand from behind. Clasp the opposite hands. Once you've made that connection, take your tricep right elbow back. Lift your chin up, open up your left chest and hold. Very gently inhale and release. Now let's transition directly into the next one. Swing the left leg all the way back. Kapot asan. Kapot is pigeon. And take your leg as far back as you can. To do that, we're gonna have to come forward. Then once your leg, your left leg is all the way back, uncurl your toes. Press with your palms, the palms of both your hands beside your right knee. Exhale and fold. Press with your palms, inhale, let's come up. And let's switch legs. Let's swing the right left leg forward and then swing the right leg all the way out. Kapot or pigeon. Take the right leg back. In the beginning, you may want to take curl your toes in to push your right knee back. And then uncurl your toes when you're in position. Press with your palms, exhale, and fold from the hip. Press with your palms, inhale. Let's come up, don't go to sleep on me, Sarah. Bring both your knees in. Zuneda, the mat is for you, there's a spare mat. Let's sit on our heels, and let's take our arms behind us. Clasp the opposite elbows. Maha Mudra, Maha is grand, Mudra is gesture, and Sarah's gonna show you. Now you could also do what Sarah's doing, bring your palms together in what's called a reverse namaste. I'm gonna clasp my opposite elbows, exhale, and fold from the hip. Lead with your chest, it takes you further. Inhale, let's come up. We're making quite a bit of progress. We have about a minute, so maybe steal another couple of postures. Extend your legs out in front of you. While we're getting into the next posture, before the, well, the credits are rolling as well, we'd like to thank our crew, Josie and Hurd, Carol Lewis, Vince Boyce, and George Sotrellis and Roberto Espinel, thank you so much for making today happen. On behalf of Sarah Torres and Nelson Santos, this is Banu Suresh signing off and you are watching Yoga Express. Extend your legs out in front of you, flex your feet. Keep your up body nice and upright. Inhale, bring your arms up, palms facing in. Now you're gonna engage your low back. Inhale, lift your legs off of the floor. That means you need to lean back, so try not to lose your balance. Inhale. Paripurna Nava, full boat. Nava is boat, Paripurna is full. Inhale and lift. It's okay if you don't go too high. The idea is to engage your low back muscles. Avoid the temptation to use your quad muscles. Exhale and release. Now bring the soles of your feet together. Baddha Kona or Kabla posture. Now we're gonna stagger ourselves. Once you've brought both your soles together, clasp them with your hands. Bring your heels as close to your groin as possible and press your knees down. If your knees do not come down too deep today, that's okay. You can place something under your knees. You just don't want it suspended midair that you feel any pain. Push your knees down with your elbows. Exhale and fold. Baddha, Kona or Kabla. Nelson, in India, literally the cobblers would sit in this position and hammer away at your shoes. They keep this big nail between the feet and repair your shoes. <laughs> Inhale, let's come up. We're doing well for time. So let's come up on our haunches. We're gonna sit, do a seated squat. It's called mala. Mala is garland. Press your palms together, push your knees out to the side. Heels are closer than the toes. And then look up, open up your chest, mala or garland. Exhale and release. Extend your legs out in front of you. That's okay, as long as the cameras are rolling, we're gonna keep going. Both hands, flex your feet, both hands beside your right hip. Exhale and dip. Supta Namaskara. Supine 